All right, Paul. So we've heard the music of the universe. Uh, now, I guess I'm kind of curious because it seems to me, to first order, we're going to have all these different scales, different uh, bits and pieces coming in. It's all kind of random. It seems to me we're just going to get an omelet at the end of it. It doesn't seem like we should get any real pattern. How do we get a pattern out of all of this? Well, what's going on, of course, here is that this whole symphony keeps going for a certain length of time until, at this point, the universe has become so large, the temperature has dropped so much, that the electrons can combine with the protons to form hydrogen, and suddenly the universe goes transparent. And the sound speed will go from very much close to the speed of light to being more like 100 kilometers, you know, like it is on here on Earth. So, yeah, so it will change the universe dramatically. And the photons are no longer lo locked to the to the uh, baryons and so they can fly freely and in fact the photons from this moment are the ones that are raining down on us right now. So what we see when we look at the microwave background is a snapshot of this particular moment. Okay. So what we're going to ask is what are we going to see if we look at that particular moment? And we can talk about this on different scales because remember our graph was showing how lumpy the universe was on different sizes. So let's look on the really big scales. So these if you remember are the really big lumps now what's happened there? Well, the density has maybe started going up as stuff has started falling in. But because these lumps are very, very big, even, there hasn't been enough time in the universe for stuff to fall in significantly. Right. So if we see any lumps on scales that big, that means this process hasn't really done anything. So what we see is what the universe was born with at that, on those big scales. Yes. So that's corresponding to this part of the diagram over here. So these are the really big scales, like in 90 degrees, 18 degrees on the sky, so the, the low-order multipoles. And here there's not much in the way of fluctuations. Uh, and what there is is a direct imprint left over from the initial conditions. Yep. Okay, so not much over there. The potentially what there is is very interesting because it hasn't been modified by the sea. You're looking right back to the era of inflation here. Right. Unfortunately, they're very big, <coughs> so that means they're not going to have very many of them, and they're going to be very hard to measure accurately, because there just aren't very many. And so it's like taking a poll of 20 people. Well, you get an answer. It's just not very accurate. So it's going to be a problem there. That, yeah, that. it's a shame, but uh, not much more, We need more, more than <coughs> one universe to poll. Yeah, that would certainly help. Okay, but now let's look at the slightly smaller lumps. So those might be like 20 degree lumps. These might be one degree sized lumps on the sky. And in this case, there's just about been time for the stuff to fall into the lump and reach its peak compression. Okay. But there hasn't yet been time for it to bounce out again. So we have a scale that's come in and it's gone, and it's, uh, and it's stopped. We've yes. caught it right at that moment. So this is in fact going to be the horizon length of the universe, which means that is how far a photon going at 57% of the speed of light can have traveled in the whole age of the universe up to recombination. So it's what we had sort of the sound horizon. It's the, yes. the limit of what sound could travel in the age of the universe. Okay. And that's where you see really big peaks. Oh, and now the fact that we have a, a lot of big peaks, so we just have a lot of big peaks, but it's, it's going to be amplified. If we go back to the previous slide, you will note that when things come in, they, for example, this one, they're going pretty quickly, and then they slow down at the top of a, yes, of a so sign. The sine waves are flat at the top. They're flat at times, so you spend a lot of time around that scale, and a lot of time it turns out around this scale. So not only are you going to have bigger bumps here, then you're going to have the fact that you're going to have lots of things right around this scale are all going to pile up and spend their time at that point. Okay. Yes, that's right. So what we're seeing here are the lumps in the universe which have had just had time for this baryon photon fluid to fall in and not yet bounce out. Okay. Now if we go to a slightly smaller scale, we're now looking at things where it's had time to fall in and bounce halfway out. So you've got to imagine it's going in, out, in, out. So this one it's gone in and it's gone halfway out. So it's, it's gone halfway out. So it's gone back to where it started from, basically, before okay. the whole effect took place. So that's going to give you actually a pretty uniform density. So you, not very many lumps at all on that scale. It's so kind of smoothed out. Right. And since it's moving very quickly, this is where the sine curve is changing the most quickly. It's the place where there's not going to be literally any pile-ups at all. So. Yep. so that gets you a, a trough there. So okay. that's not so much fluctuations there. Yep. But then you can go to here. So in this case, it's, it's fallen into the dark matter lump bounced out and now it's concentrated in between the dark matter lumps. Okay, so we've come down, we've bounced, we've gone out and we've stalled because yeah, our... So you've got another sine wave over here, so we've both yeah. gone in together yeah. and then we've both bounced out, so now we're concentrated here in okay. between the two. 
in between the two lumps. And again, again it's a flat bottom yeah, of the side. Flat wave. bottom, so they get to be a lot of them there. In the case, you get another peak there. Okay, interesting. And then as you keep on going down this curve, you can see ones where once again it's back to zero density fluctuations. So that'll be another trough. And then here's one where it's gone in, gone out, and gone in again. And that'll give you the next peak. Right, and you can imagine that these are all going to sort of be multiples of each other because yes. it's almost like harmonics in, a, uh, in, orca, uh, in sound. That's right. It's exactly like, say, a wave on a violin string or an yep. organ pipe. You can get one, two, three, four. In this case, instead of being bound physically, say, by the ends of the violin string at both cases, you're bound by time. You've got inflation at the beginning and when the universe became transparent at the end. And you've got to fit you know, one wave, two wow. waves, three waves in there. So you get this whole series of discrete peaks. Right, and they just keep on going on and on and on. But they do get weaker as you go down here. So what's going on there is that, in fact, the end of recombination was not instantaneous. So up here, everything's bound. Um, over here, the elect uh, electrons and protons start combining each other. And yeah. so it starts becoming transparent. So the photons can now move a bit. And then as time goes on, they get to move further and further. But it's not suddenly go from opaque to transparent. The fog gradually thins out. OK, so on the really big her scale, it's not going to make much difference because that time that it turns transparent is not very long relative to the age of the universe. And so they're not going to be able to move much. So they're not going to go from a dark to a light part. But when you get to really small areas, they're going to be able to move from one lump to the other uh, because of that transparency issue. Yes, so they can spread around. So these small scale things get suppressed because the photons can random walk their way from a peak to a trough and vice versa while they're still partially bound until eventually it becomes totally transparent and they just fly freely to meet, uh, meet us. So that's giving us this decline down right, there at so the it's bottom. Sort which of is called a smearing the out, mm -hmm. uh, which we call silk damping. Yes, yeah, so the damping tail. Yep. Okay, so actually we can explain this whole thing remarkably well. Well, well done, Paul. That's a great piece of physics explained. I mean, that's a really complicated piece of physics that we didn't really understand very well, even when I was in graduate school. And now, voila, we can teach it uh, here in this, uh, this, this course. And it turns out, as we'll see in the next video, to be really in uh, interesting bit of physics in terms of measuring what's going on for the cosmology of the universe.